stretching across the Arizona desert, the Davis Mountain Boneyard isn't just where giant robots from Transformers might hide out. It is the largest aircraft boneyard in the world where thousands of legendary planes rest, waiting for their next mission. When planes arrive at the base, they go through a regeneration process carried out by the 309th Aerospace Maintenance and Regeneration Group. They are technicians that inspect, preserve, and disassemble more than 3,000 planes for parts to support active fleets. If the aircraft is still airworthy, they are refurbished for reuse. In fact, planes like the C-130 Hercules and A-10 Thunderbolt II have been restored from this boneyard and returned to active service. Aircraft may look slightly different from their active duty days. The windows are coated with spray lat, a white paint that protects the cockpit and interior from the harsh sun. Many planes are also repainted to restore their original colors and markings, ensuring they look just as they did in their prime. Whether it's a camo pattern, polished metal, or the sleek black of a reconnaissance jet, these efforts keep these retired giants looking battle ready for decades to come. In the non-destructive inspection process, technicians apply a fluorescent dye to critical aircraft parts. When these parts are exposed under a black light, tiny cracks become visible. If these cracks aren't repaired, they can lead to serious malfunctions or even complete aircraft failure. After inspection and repairs, each plane is tested on site by professionals to ensure it is durable and ready for demanding conditions. The regeneration process offers a significant advantage. It saves the US military billions of taxpayer dollars by reusing existing aircraft rather than building new ones from scratch. Specific parts of the airplanes can be requested by military units around the world or even sold to allied nations, essentially turning the boneyard into a massive aircraft supply shop. But why the desert? Well, the desert's low humidity and minimal rainfall extends the plane's longevity by preventing rust and corrosion. The hard, alkaline soil, known as Kalish, acts like a natural packing lot, providing a solid surface that prevents even the heaviest bombers from sinking into the ground. Most of the planes here are actually from World War II. During the war, the United States was rapidly converting everyday factories into aircraft production lines, fueling a manufacturing surge that dealt a decisive blow to the Axis powers. American factories churned out planes at an unprecedented pace, sending aircraft to both the European and Pacific fronts. Among these were the C-47 Skytrains, which played a crucial role during D-Day by dropping paratroopers into Normandy. When the war ended, 65,000 planes were left abandoned. However, officials from the Army's San Antonio Air Technical Service Command came up with a groundbreaking idea that would change the fate of this aircraft forever. In 1946, they established the boneyard at Davis Mountain Field in Pima, and over time, the nearby Air and Space Museum was created, giving these planes a new purpose. If you want to get a glimpse of what it's like to be president in 1960, you can venture into the Douglas VC-118A a former Air Force One plane used by John F. Kennedy and Lyndon B. Johnson. Right across the museum lot sits one of the most advanced bombers of its time, the Boeing B-29 Super Fortress. This iconic aircraft played a crucial role in ending World War II by delivering the atomic bombs to Hiroshima and Nagasaki. On a lighter note, the museum also features a true oddity in the aviation world, the Aerospace Lines 377 Super Guppy. This aircraft stands out for its massive fish-like shape. Despite its quirky appearance, this cargo plane was a powerhouse capable of transporting up to 54,000 pounds of space cargo, including rocket parts for NASA's Apollo program. <laughs>